All right, I uh, got my replacement tiny SA, so I'm back in business again. I know everybody's interested in having me make some more videos. I've already had some requests of uh, uh, doing some tiny SA things. Um, so I wanted to make sure that the unit that I got was uh, performing well, uh, now that I have one that's uh, supposedly good. Um, I put the new software in. It came with old software, so it hadn't been tested at the factory, so luckily I got a good one. I put the new software in it and it passes all tests, um, including the new ones for the attenuator and things. So it seems to be a good unit. Um, so I thought, okay, uh, let's go ahead and uh, see if it uh, still has the, some of the symptoms that, uh, uh, that I was not too happy with. Well, not that I'm not too happy. I mean, it's a $50 item, so I can't beat up on it too hard, but these are the things that annoy me. Um, oh, and so let's just run through some of them. Uh, I'm going to be using this uh, uh, splitter in a, in a certain way. I'm going to bring in a, a known clean source and I'm going to put it through a splitter. The splitter has a 17 dB isolation between the two ports and that's not enough. And so I have matching 20 uh, dB pads on both sides. So uh, the isolation from port to port now is 20 plus 17 plus 20, right? So that's 57 dB isolation between the two. And that should be enough to uh, keep any uh, noise from the HP into the tiny and any noise from the tiny into the HP. So uh, they're, they're pretty well isolated right now. And so uh, let's go ahead and pop that down here and let's show you the setup. All right, let me get this, let me get this focused well. All right, I think that'll do. So I've turned them both on. They're both in preset mode. They're both uh, straight out of the factory mode. Um, this one's gonna cheat a bit because it has a higher frequency. So we're gonna set its uh, stop frequency to 350. So now they're both sweeping the same, zero to 350. And um, the choices that are made in the firmware on the tiny SA is to have a very, very low noise floor and uh, a narrower um, filter as the default. Um, I certainly can change the default uh, on the HP, but I just kind of want to leave them the same. I could change my resolution bandwidth to make it, to make it narrow too. Um, but we are going to leave everything in auto for now. All right, so this is a 200 megahertz signal. So I will set the uh, I will set the, didn't I type that right? Frequency, 200 megahertz, span one megahertz. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna do it the same here on the tiny. Uh, frequency center, 200 megahertz, span one megahertz. There we go, okay? So we've just put the both, of, both of them uh, and let, the, let them do their auto thing, all right? And so the HP likes to just keep things kind of in a general general direction. Uh, the tiny is, is uh, maybe balancing things out a bit, letting you see the noise floor. The HP is kind of hiding the noise floor. Um, we can certainly bring the HP up out of the out of here, and you can see that it has much more dynamic range. And now we can see its noise floor. Um, so whatever firmware choices they made, they they decided to keep it low at that point. So let's go ahead and change the uh, reference level uh, to, um, oops. Uh, I'm gonna set it to minus 25 dBm. That puts the peak right up at the top. And I'm gonna do the same here uh, with the tiny. I'm gonna put its reference level at minus 25. Okay, so now the reference levels are both minus 25 at the top. And uh, uh, people are gonna be saying, well, where, 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 does, this, where does this come from? This um, uh, skirt here, um, I don't know if you wanna call it phase noise. I think it's probably integrated power under the IF filters. So it's not exactly phase noise. I think it's kind of accumulated uh, integrated noise. Um, so let me prove to you that the signal is very clean. I'll take the bandwidth down on the, uh, on the HP uh, to something 
to something ridiculously small. So you can see that the, the noise floor is way down here and uh, very, very narrow. So the, the uh, uh, bottom, bottom here is like 100, 103, minus 103 dBm. So it's, it's, it's a very, very clean signal. Um, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and leave it here. All right. So let me, um, let me lower the amplitude by 10 dB. Oops, sorry. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Okay, so the tiny is going to have a hard time keeping up with me, so I'm going to lower it. Lower it. Lower it. So that skirt does go away um, eventually. So I think, again, that's kind of some kind of integrated integrated power under the uh, uh, under the filters. Now you can see that we can just barely see it on the on the HP. We're getting a really clean signal here. So the choices again that they've made in the firmware here allow us to to uh, have a smaller uh, uh, smaller resolution here. So we could so we can certainly change the resolution on the uh, on the HP and 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 start to see that little that little a little peak again. So there is some difference between uh, the resolution that you see, the noise that you see, the auto scaling that you see. There's just difference in the two. So we, we just have to realize that and, and, uh, and, and kind of overcome that. All right. So let's go back up to uh, uh, full power here. All right. So we are at a uh, resolution bandwidth of seven. And so we're going to set that to, uh, uh, let's see here, uh, not there. We want uh, frequency resolution bandwidth. We'll set it to three. And this one's three. So now, now we're going to have the same resolution bandwidth on the same. And you can see this one's sweeping very, very slow. Um, but the other interesting thing is that a spur showed up when I went to a resolution bandwidth of three. It wasn't there at seven, but now we have a spur showing up, uh, showing up at uh, at three. So we can get rid of that if we turn on spur removal. Um, it, it it takes a long time to scan, so you'll just have to be patient. And there you go, the spur removal knocked it down. It didn't knock it down entirely. It certainly broadened it out and integrated it out a bit. I'm not exactly sure how it does it. I think it probably takes two measurements to see if, under two different conditions, and see if that spur is still there or not, and makes a decision whether it should be displaying it or not. But anyway, you can see that it's still there. It, it's not a real thing. It's, it's a spur inside the instrument. So it's a little bit there. So there's still two limitations to the tiny. One is this noise skirt, and the other is, uh, is spurs. And so let's just, uh, this is way too slow for me. So I'm going to turn the uh, spur removal off. And uh, we'll just have to deal with it. And then I'll go back to uh, resolution bandwidth of auto. And so it's, it's operating kind of in a quicker mode. There we go. All right. Uh, so um, I had complained in the past about it's jumping up and down. It still jumps up and down, believe it or not. Um, it's a little bit hard to get the conditions right for it to do it, but let me try. Uh, I'm going to do a preset. I'm going to load presets. So this is factory preset and I'm going to do a, um, oops, I'm going to do, it's hard for me to stay out of the camera and do this. Uh, I'm going to do a uh, frequency center, 200 megahertz. I'm going to do a span of 1 megahertz. And then we're going to uh, watch it for a second. So now it's staying at a, a, a resolution, I mean, a, a reference level of minus 10 right now. And there it goes, falls down again. Now it's, now it's at zero. So it's still popping up and down, right? Okay, so you've seen it on camera, great. All right, so that, that problem is still there. There it popped up again. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, see how it's doing um, with uh, 
uh, dynamic range. I think we already saw that. It's working fine. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, apply some modulation to the signal. Okay, I've just added uh, some modulation, an AM modulation of 5 kilohertz at 30%. And you can see that uh, there, it popped up again. It's still, it's still hopping. Uh, you can see that uh, the integrated power is, is doing funny things. Uh, let's go ahead and lower it in uh, amplitude, 10 dB, 20 dB. All right, so this is kind of a known thing that AM modulation just kind of messes with the, with the tiny SA and you have to override it yourself. So you have to know that you're AM modulating. You have to know that the tiny has problems and then you have to know to go do the uh, attenuator and set some, right now the attenuator is set to 3 dB and we're going to set it to uh, 20 dB. And... Um, that made it a little happier. All right, so let's zoom in. Uh, we will go to a span of 100 kilohertz and um, we will go to a span here. Uh, frequency span, 100 kilohertz. And uh, this is the uh, a video that I did on the uh, resolution of the tiny can actually look better than the resolution of a Gaussian filter. These digital filters can, can look better than the Gaussian filter, and here's a good example. So they are both set to three kilohertz of, uh, of bandwidth, um, but this one definitely looks different than that one. If I change the resolution bandwidth of the, of the uh, HP to one one kilohertz. Now they're looking. Now they're looking the same. Okay. So uh, you know, plus plus in the corner for a tiny SA on this. Um, let's see. The other thing that uh, I wanted to point out that I think could be improved, and that is, um, let's go ahead and um, go to a measure more AM. So measure more AM should have just automatically done a measurement. I'll show you how that works. Well, here, I'll just do it. I'll do measure AM modulation, bang it. It automatically did it. It found the three points. It calculated the, the uh, modulation. It said it's 30%. And that's exactly what I have set on the generator, 30%. So immediately it does everything. It has the display. It knows where the peak is. It certainly knows where the center frequency is. It, it knows where these other two peaks are. But, it, but the tiny SA has to ask me questions. That's just silly. It says, what's the center frequency of the signal? Well, you know that. I ju just set it. I set the center frequency of the stupid SA. But it's asking me again. Okay, so frequency of signal, 200 megahertz. All right. And so now it can do it. Oh, why couldn't it do it before? I had the center frequency set to 200. How brain dead is it? <laughs> anyway, so it find, found the three points. Okay, great. It found the three points. But does it give me percent modulation? No. It gives me, it gives me DBC. I don't care about DBC. I care about percent modulation. If I wanted DBC, um, I would do a different type of uh, measurement. Let me turn the AM modulation off. Let me go to peak search and let me do a peak table. So I can certainly do a peak table and it finds these three peaks and lists them down. Okay, so that is a peak table. This, these, these are actual values of the peaks and I could sort them by frequency or sort them by amplitude. So, so if I'm interested in peaks, I'll, I'll do this measurement. But if something is called AM measurement, it, it, why is it giving me DBCs? I, I, this one doesn't make sense to me. Okay. And the FM modulation is the same way. It gives me DBCs. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. So anyway, um, I think that uh, problem that I had with the attenuators is, is, is gone, obviously. But it doesn't fix all of the gripes that I have about the tiny SA. Um, yes, they're all overcomable, but you really um, need to know a little bit about the limitations of the tiny SA. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, you can get into, get into trouble. So let me show you that. Let's turn off the, uh, let's turn off the measurement here. 
Uh, let's go ahead and, oh, it just defaulted back. It didn't, didn't remember where I was. That's kind of weird. All right, let's just do a uh, preset just to make sure we're at ground zero. Turn our peak table off over here. Let's go to uh, frequency um, center 200 megahertz uh, span 1 megahertz uh, span 100 kilohertz. All right. So, so this is this is the problem that I that, that is a known a known a known problem and something that you just have you just have to know. So, uh, what do you have to know? You have to know that you're intending to view an AM modulated signal and probably an FM modulated signal as well. You have although FM seems to work okay. It seems to be an AM problem. I don't know why. But you have to know that you're that you're going to be looking at AM modulation. So you can't use this to find AM modulation. But if you know you have AM modulation, then you then you then you know that it might do this. If you ever see a signal that looks this way, if you ever see a signal that looks like a picket fence, then it's probably a dead giveaway that oh, it, the tiny SA is is in a is in a place where it's not happy, and this is the clue to go and set the attenuator level. Uh, you need to set the attenuator. So right now the attenuator is set to 4 dB, 3 dB. So even if, even if I put in a 10 dB of attenuation, um, 10 dB wasn't enough. All right, so let's put in 15 dB. Uh, 15 dB was enough. So 15 dB fixed it, right? So, you know, major gripe again. Um, I know it's a limitation. I know it's something they'd like to fix, but haven't figured out how to do that. Um, it just means that uh, you have to you have to know about these things. So one is that you have to know that there's spurs, and and try to find out if they're really there or not. Um, usually with spurs, you can just change the attenuation of your signal. If you change the attenuation of your signal by 10 dB, your your spur should drop 10 dB as well, 10 dB as well, and that's 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 a good giveaway um, that it's. Uh, a real signal. If the spur stays up, it's being internally generated and changing the external signal level shouldn't change the level of the spur. Unfortunately, that trick in the tiny ASA doesn't work. When you change the external signal, it changes the noise level of the system as well, and the spur will move up and down 10 dB. So it's not an easy thing to do just by changing the amplitude of your signal to see if your spur is moving up and down or not. Um, so uh, you need to either go in and use its internal uh, attenuator, uh, although I'm not sure why that would work any better, um, or uh, that spur removal button. You can try to push that and see if uh, things go things go differently or not. Um, anyway, kind of a long video just to uh, validate that the tiny essay that I received is good, and uh, the problems that uh, I've been complaining about are sort of still there. Um, other than that one problem. Uh, uh, there was a, uh, uh, the hunting was much, much worse when it didn't have that 4 dB of attenuation step, but it's, it still does hunt.